Edric, this is the pavement management plan for the remaining years of Measure K. We're going to receive a report on the pavement management plan for the remaining 17 years of Measure K and provide direction to staff. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the Town Council. My name is Edric Kwan. I'm your Public Works Director. I also have here with me today Ryan Schaefer, and he's with Nichols Engineering, um, the consultant that has been providing us uh, payment management services for many years and has also designed our last, four, our last three payment projects. So as you know, one of the Town Council goals for this year is to complete the next phase of payment repair of our neighborhood streets on time and on budget, <coughs> excuse me, and to develop criteria for the annual maintenance over the next 17 years. While the 2015 pavement project is expected to be completed on time and on budget, the second part of the town council goal is addressed with this presentation today. So I wanted to first begin with an outline of today's presentation. <coughs> We're gonna begin with a very brief Measure K background then go right into the intensive three-year program that we just completed. We'll provide you the results to date through the payment management report that was just completed through our PTAP grant. Go into the next 17 years, uh, starting off with budget scenarios and then going into four separate recommendations. And lastly, I will end with a conclusion and questions. So as you know, back in 2011, our payment management report had told us that we had over 50% of our streets in poor or failed condition. And if we did nothing about it, it would increase significantly to over 75%. And furthermore, if we did nothing about it, the backlog of 25 million would increase dramatically to 75 million. But fortunately, the town of Moraga went forward with Measure K, a one cent sales tax initiative that passed significantly in 2012 by 70%. Of the annual sales tax, $600,000 of it was used and leveraged to yield upfront funds of approximately $7.7 .7 million to spend on this three-year intensive payment program. Currently, what's remaining in our non-leveraged annual sales tax is $1.1 million. Rolled into that is 174,000 of garbage impact fees that are currently programmed into our annual payment program. So this three-year intensive plan consists of three phases. The first year in 2013 addressed streets in fair condition, the second year in poor condition, and this year failed streets. Why do we do that? The main reason why is for us to increase the quantities of those treatment types so that we can yield better unit prices. The concept of buying in bulk gets us better prices. In addition, we're able to ideal construction, uh, pair ideal construction management teams with exact experience and qualifications needed for each treatment type. During the first year for the streets in fair condition, we applied rubberized cape seals and microservicing, and that provided an immediate impact by addressing nearly a third in miles of all our neighborhood streets. We also used a very cost-effective treatment, the rubberized cape seal, in lieu of traditional overlays, which really saved us approximately 50% in dollars. We also promoted green technologies by garnering a Cal Recycle grant that provided us funds to also divert 10,000 tires from landfills. The second year, we uh, addressed streets that were in poor shape by utilizing rubberized hot mix asphalt rub overlays. RHMA offers twice the resistance to reflective cracking and twice the service life. It also promoted green technologies by diverting 32,000 tires from landfills and a bunch of really good pavement qualities such as reduction in traffic noise, um, making sure the pavement stays longer, black longer due to a slower oxidization. This current year, we're focusing on streets that are failed by applying surface reconstruction methodologies to it. Um, and that entails removing the top four to five inches of asphalt and replacing it with new pavement. Six out of the 10 streets will have a top layer of rubberized asphalt. Uh, and by doing so, we did again garner another Cal Recycle grant and that diverted 11,500 tires from landfills. During the process of the 2015 project, 
uh, we had identified three streets to receive full depth reclamation, a very good process that yields about 30 to 40 percent savings. It's a much deeper reconstruction method than the ones that were completed this year. And we had to do so because of the shallow utilities that need to be lowered. So the results of these three years is quite significant. As far as number of segments completed, we were able to complete 148 segments out of a total of 439. And that basically means that we've completed a little over a third of our entire town. Here you can see uh, a graphic of the um, streets in blue from the 2013 project. Layered on top of that is the red streets, which uh, happened in 2014. And lastly, this year, the green streets here are shown. And this, as you can see, is about a third of our town. And the additional results is our use of rubberized um, asphalt. And in doing so, in total, we were able to divert 53,500 tires from landfills. We were able to add to our payment management program $232,000. And as mentioned before, the many benefits of um, using rubber in our, uh, in our pavement. One of the biggest achievements so far to date is our payment condition index rise. As you know, um, PCIs range from zero to 100, zero being failed and 100 being brand new. Before Measure K, our PCI was 49. In 2013, it jumped up to 58. In 2014, it jumped up to 64. And today, it is 70. Um, our increases in PCI did receive quite a bit of attention. And MTC, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, awarded us the best overall pavement management um, program of the year. So to look at our PCIs in different ways, if we split it by the different functional classifications, you see that our arterials have an average of 71, while our collectors and residential streets have a 70. And what that's saying is that all of our streets are in very good shape. Not one is better than other. This is another chart that shows how that average is split up between good, fair, poor, and very poor. And to note, over 50% of our streets are in good shape. 21.7% are in fair, 18.1% in poor, and 46 is very poor. Now, I showed you a slide at the very beginning of this presentation what the state of repayment is. I have here a side-by-side -side pie chart that shows you what it is pre-measure K and three years results now. In the pre-measure K, it shows over 50% in very poor or poor. Now that has changed significantly with less than a quarter of our streets in poor or very poor. To look at it geographically, we have the same side-by-side -side map. On the left-hand side, the pre-measure K streets, all of the yellow and red are mostly seen. Now we see mostly green and blue. So quite a big change has occurred for our streets. I'd like to pass this on now to Ryan Schaefer to talk about the four different budget scenarios that we are required to do as part of the PTAP grant. Mayor Quite. Edric. Vice Mayor Metcalf. Yeah, uh, Edric, this is, this is really nice news. Uh, in, in your, um, you go back to the pie chart that shows the current, yeah, that one. Uh, the very poor. Does that include uh, South Ream Boulevard, which is the area that will be, we will be rebuilt? That is correct. It's uh, this is information based on current visual assessments that were conducted through the entire town, and the results are shown in this particular pie graph. Okay, thanks. Well, well, the question is, once Ream Boulevard gets rebuilt, what's going to happen to that 4.6%? We will show you more information with the budget scenarios. Oh, come on. <laughs> It'll come up in the next slides. It, it will increase, oh, oh, oh. too. The PCIs will improve. Yeah. But, you know, relative for the entire network, that's a, a smaller piece of your network. It is a, a lower PCI that obviously weights your, your network. But, you know, I would have guessed that one street um, will not probably have a significant, you know, impact um, to your network. 
exactly. I mean, it's, probably, it's more of a visual, and I'm sure it's a political thing more than, than if it, from a statistical analysis that you do with, with the engineering, you, you probably won't see a huge bump in your network. Yeah. So the next is really, um, these are what-if scenarios. Um, this is basically looking at um, four different budget scenarios that are required by MTC. Um, and this is how they get a, their, their hands around all the different agencies that report to MTC um, in terms of forecasting, how they, how they know how your network and how they, the entire network, nine Bay Area counties wide, is gonna perform um, and, and see how, that, you know, how you tie into that. So they take all this data. And so these are the four required analysis. Um, the first one is really your optimum budget. Um, it's a bit, it's, it's great because it gives you, if you have all of the money in the world, it's heavily distributed towards the front of that, um, you know, that budget analysis. You're heavily front loading because of time value of money. You know, you're, you're, you're basically putting a lot of money up front. It's not realistic from the standpoint of trying, you know, to have a, a really good average budget that you can depend on year to year. So just take that with a grain of salt when you're looking at this first scenario. So you, essentially the red bar is your deferred maintenance, um, but in, you know, basically within the first year or two, you eliminate the deferred maintenance because it's heavily front loaded and you achieve a network PCI in the upper 70s. So that's what, you know, if you have all the money, um, that's what we, essentially what it would look like in the next 17 years, both in terms of PCI and what you see in the red bars, which is deferred maintenance. So that's that slide. The next one is really your current um, funding level and how that would uh, project out into the future in the next 17 years. Um, so you can see that obviously your, your bond and your measure K has a very significant impact. Um, and, but, but again, that, you know, as with all bond analysis, unless you secure um, additional funds, there's, there, it, kinda, it begins to wear off. And you have your deferred maintenance begins to increase. Your PCI will go to back down to about 57 by in about 17 years. So a very nice bump and um, impact to your network. Um, but as everyone is struggling with in the Bay Area, um, even with bond, bonding, you know, Measure M in Berkeley, uh, Measure K here, we're looking at some analysis with the city of Oakland. Um, how do you sustain the, the PCI levels and the deferred maintenance? How do you keep the deferred maintenance low? Um, so this is what your, your funding level looks like um, in the next 17 years. And again, the 17 years is uh, it's basically 20. It's three of Measure K plus 17, so you got a 20-year analysis period, which is pretty typical. Um, next scenario we're gonna look at is really what it would take to just keep you, what you have now. You've, you've made a significant investment with Measure K. Um, it's fabulous to go from 50 to 70. I will say that's to be congratulations um, to you all because um, that is uh, not inconsequential and it's very unheard of in a lot of networks. It takes a lot of work to get up to 70. Um, significant increase, but to maintain it, um, you know, your current funding is around 24, you need to get up to about 33.8 in the next 17 years. Um, and now you can see that maintains your deferred maintenance rather nicely as well as your PCI. Let's go to the next one. So this is, uh, if you want, this is a classic scenario that uh, MTC looks, it's a what if scenario of how, how much if it would it take to improve your network by another five points. Um, it's very similar to your, um, your, your first scenario, it's not heavily front-loaded like your first scenario, but essentially you're getting up to roughly the same um, PCI. It was 78 for the um, ideal funding scenario, um, the first one. And it's 75 here, and you see that you spent about 44.2, and you were spending close to 50 on the first scenario. So um, it's, it's about the same. Practically speaking, um, I think being in the 70s is a great place to be. Um, once you start to deteriorate below 70, your network is at risk, it's in the fair condition category, your, your degradation is a little bit more precipitous um, and, and happens a little bit more quickly um, below 70. So I think somewhere between 70 and 75 is a good, a good place to be. Um, so congratulations again, um, it's, it's just a job well done and, and uh, the, these scenarios kind of validate um, what you're seeing. So. There is uh, one more, this is a synopsis. It's a lot of uh, different numbers. It compares it nicely side by side. Again, you can see the various uh, funding levels in the first column um, over that 17 year period. You can see the, uh, the corresponding um, PCI is obviously more funding, uh, greater impact to your PCI. 
Um, and obviously with the current funding level, you have a potentially a 13 point drop that you'll face in the next 17 years. Deferred maintenance, uh, you're, you're down significantly from where you were um, three years ago, but still it will grow with your current investment um, approach um, to about 28 million. Um, and then if you look at your percentages of, of roads in good shape, um, obviously if you front loaded and spend all of the money, you're gonna have most of your network's gonna be in fantastic condition. Um, the next one year, current funding level um, will be less than half by in 17 years, and the next uh, couple are, are you know, roughly three quarters. Um, and then you look at your very poor. Uh, this is where you're gonna have your failed or very poor conditioned roadways. Um, in 17 years, you'll be looking at about 18% of your network where the others are, are pretty modest. So that's hopefully a helpful um, synopsis of, of kind of some what if uh, scenarios and how it might project out into the future. Maybe. That's all I had. Thank you, Bird. All right. Well, I'm going to now focus on uh, moving forward with the next 17 years and the four specific recommendations that I would like to move forward with. The first of which is to continue focusing on one type of treatment per year. Um, given that we have less monies in the future, uh, it's really critical for us to really bundle these types of projects together and get the best uh, quantities, again, to get the best unit prices. So what that means is in 2016, we'll go through and start again with the preventive maintenance treatment project. In 2017, an overlay. In 2018, reconstruction. And we'll cycle through that again. The second recommendation is to budget appropriate percentages of funding for each type of treatment. And what, what we did specifically through Street Saver is a special analysis. We took all the funds and looked at how much money should we be spending on each of these types of treatments and in order to maximize our PCI. And what the result shows that we should spend 50% of our funding on preventive maintenance, 17% on overlays, and 33% on reconstruction types of treatments. So just using very simple figures, let's say for the next three years, we have a million dollars. That means next year we want to spend $500,000 on preventive maintenance, the second year, 17,000 overlays, and the third year, 33,000. Um, and so we'll be applying these percentages moving forward so that we can maximize our PCI. If we do shift the percentages around, we won't be optimizing that PCI. The third recommendation is to budget non-Measure K funds at or greater than pre-Measure K levels. So we took data from the past 10 years pre prior to Measure K and we found that through garnering various grants and applying other funds like gas tax and Measure J, we averaged about $507,000 annually. Now, once Measure K has been implemented from 2012 to next year in 2016, and looking at all the grants that we've received, uh, that would average $985,000 a year, which is quite significant compared to the past 10 years. We also looked at the future Measure K projections, and it's very promising and estimated at a minimum of 1.55 million a year. So that's about 400 to $500,000 more than we currently are programming. And so future programming would adjust um, accordingly. Um, there's also potential future, future funding that we're gonna receive, one of which is through CCTA. They will have another sales tax measure similar to Measure J in 2016, and that will provide us more return to source funds, again, depending on the percent that is decided upon. Another future funding initiative is Senate Bill 16, and if that gets approved, for five years we'll be receiving between 335,000 to 430,000 a year. Now adding all of that up, um, I'm sure we can achieve 507,000 or more moving forward to add to our payment program. The fourth recommendation I have is to partner with other agencies to reduce costs. Now this will definitely help us with reducing duplicate administrative costs and or increasing quantities again to help reduce bid prices. Now this has been a reoccurring goal for the past couple of Tri-City Council meetings and was also part of the 2014 Town Mayor's goal. Currently we are exploring a joint surface seal project with the City of Lafayette to further increase the quantities and reduce our costs. 
Also being explored is a joint project with the city of Orinda to address Ivy Drive. Next year, they are planning to move forward with a very large $6 million project. And part of that project is a portion of Ivy Drive. So for them to extend it to the portion that has Moraga um, can be very beneficial because we can get quite a deal. And that's one of the streets where the center line serves as the town limits. And that's the one right next to Miramani. So in conclusion, at this rate, we talked a little bit about the various scenarios. And in scenario three specifically, to maintain a PCI of 70, when you look at current funding levels and what we need to achieve a 70 continuing on, is about a $1 million gap. With these types of fundings and the projections of Measure K mo moving up, I think we are able to continue that trend and maintain our PCI of 70. I'd like to open it up for questions. Thank you.